um, but you can see my screen, right? Very well. Okay, perfectly. Well, my, my name uh, on, on Twitter is uh, Semantic Fire. That's very appropriate. So I do something with semantics and I do something with fire. Um, I thought uh, this presentation, the slides were in English, but unfortunately they're not. So I have to do on the fly presentation. Um, I discovered it only 10 minutes ago. Um, uh, I run a company called NetEdge. We've been around for 25 years and we focus uh, specifically on, on linked data and graph technology within, within the emergency response uh, sector. Uh, we do that on a, on a, on a global scale. Um, and besides that, I'm also a career firefighter in the Amsterdam Fire Department. So you can see me on the lower right corner just before I entered this burning house with some of my colleagues where we were actually able to save a father and this uh, a three-year-old daughter from the back. Um, these things, so uh, this running this net age and, and, and being a firefighter are brought together by two things and that's my fear. Um, I'm afraid that something will happen to me or either my colleagues or the people we serve and that in the end we figure out that we had the information to prevent that from happening but we were not able to get to it. So information Integration is uh, for the emergency services is our is our key uh, work field and and we believe that semantic technology is is the only way uh, to solve that knowledge graphs etc. Um, so let's let's take this as example. Um, it's for a couple of years ago. Um, so at seven o nine in the morning, um, somebody calls the dispatch and says there's a fire in a in a garage. Uh, Twenty four seconds later, they tell oh the 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 wall. The front, the front of the of the garage came come fully outwards, uh, and two seconds later we get a, multiple calls. Uh, supposed to be a a commercial property, uh, the whole thing is on fire. Well, you can see in the background, um, that's pretty accurate probably. Um, so, the thing is, what do we think of as firefighters if we go uh, on such a call? What, what were the four minutes that we have, and and then at some point you realize that we, we have a lot to think about and mostly it's unstructured. Um, and that is the, the, the puzzle we try to solve where we hope that semantics and, and, and all sorts of algorithms can help to filter out the information which is, which is really relevant. One of the things we're interested in is information about the building. And this is from the Institute of Physical Safety in the Netherlands who did a research a couple of years ago. And, and you can see it's from January, 2014, where they looked at which are the, the data sets <clears throat> and the features we are interested in from various um, um, various buildings, et cetera. And they figured out that we probably have 25 data sets both publicly and um, uh, privately, which say something about buildings and they all help us to create this picture of where we go to. But as you can imagine, the fire service does not have the time to go over all these 25 data sets. And I always tell uh, people that it's socially not accepted that the fire service pulls up in front of a burning building and spends like another two minutes um, in uh, scrolling in their, on their iPads in the, in the fire truck. So uh, the, the, the KRO, that's the, the abbreviation for it. Um, it combines a set of, 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 of sources about buildings, about taxes, about uh, um, chamber of commerce, child care, the height of the buildings, and, and some other information. Um, but the only problem was what they did is they created just another another database. I'm going to skip these slides because they're not re relevant uh, for, for this presentation. So here we see on the red dot is the actual location of where the, the, the fire was alerted. And what they did is they created this database which contains all the information from all the data sets. As you can see, the whole problem with this is that the, um, the semantics of all this data is completely gone. It's just a flat set of uh, properties and you have no clue what it is. And well, there's some, some booleans in there as well where you as a semantic web person were like, why, why on earth are they even in there if there's no data behind it, et cetera, et cetera. And there's multiple versions of the same data. Um, and sometimes you have multiple data sets describing one uh, building. So it's not really logical to do that. And, and we can see something on the neighboring departments and that is probably uh, the garage that they talked about um, where they said the whole, the whole wall came out. Um, we can find something about the surroundings so you can get quite a bit of information on the businesses around it. 
But still, as you look at it, all this data is, is basically everywhere in the, um, uh, in, in, in the in data set and there's no semantics behind it, what things mean and what the provenance actually is. Oh. Um, so what we did a couple of years ago, we did in the in, in, in Inspire Arena Tender where we thought about, we take this specific problem, we're gonna build a knowledge graph out of it. And that's what we did. Um, so, an hour and 45 minutes later, in the, there, there came a, a recognition as, okay, uh, the fire started at a certain location. Uh, there's been an explosion there. The other ones are not um, uh, affected, but because the chemicals in, in some of the other buildings, we, we need to know more about, and we wanna see um, if we can prevent uh, escalation of this, of this incident. And as you can see, it's, it's a pretty decent incident. This is from across the canals in Amsterdam that you could actually see the fire burning. Um, and well, they were not joking when they said um, the whole facade came out because as you can see that clearly, uh, that clearly did. So um, one of the things we, we tried to do in, in this part was to um, see if we could take the idea of, um, I think I'm gonna stop this one, stop sharing the screen. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do is instead of sort of the traditional way of taking all these various data sets with spatial features um, and, and try to map them on one feature and have all the information everywhere, could we create a knowledge graph where we would be able to say from a spatial extent, uh, get all the information in the back end of, of of all these data sets um, and, and see what is actually available. Because the traditional way within the emergency services was, well, you simply enable all the various map layers, so the geospatial way, the, all the various map layers on screen. And that had a couple of issues. Um, the first issue was that you needed to know which of the map layers were actually interesting. Um, and second, you needed to understand how these things actually relate um, one of the problems is that even if you draw a pin through a map and various map layer sticks, the relationships between the various map layers is semantically not defined in a geospatial system. So, and that is where the semantic systems actually can play a uh, play a role. So we've built this, um, uh, this, this demo demonstrator and we actually have this in production um, at the Amsterdam Fire Department. And the only thing is I have to make sure that I can share that part. Um, in a different screen, let me try that one. So can you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Um, I'll probably need to log in again. Yeah, I was afraid of that. So this is a, uh, this is our fire graph product and knowledge graph for the fire service, which runs um, within the Amsterdam Fire Department. And here we have the, the, the map of Amsterdam. And if I would uh, basically zoom in, you can see all the buildings. And the traditional way of getting most information about these objects would to have like a ton of map layers here and select the map layers and show the information. We decided, can we take a completely different approach and say, oh, maybe I just wanna click on a, a specific building and then see what, what kind of properties there are. And these are official um, codes for the for the uh, data sets for, for the Dutch government. And now if I click on it, what happens is that it will actually go through the knowledge graph on the fly. So this is a real-time querying and show all the properties on the various data sets for this specific property. Uh, so instead of me needing to figure out which are the, the data sets which are relevant, it just shows everything it, it actually knows about uh, this specific location. Um, and we simply use a graph query in the in the back end. Let me see if I can try to find something else. Um, this is a bit smaller one. And actually there's, a bit, because we're talking about incident response, there is a um, uh, inc historic incident part here as well. Um, and you notice that there is only the information which is actually relevant uh, is in there. So if I take this one, for example, um, you see some other things popping up and one of the things that is now available in here is there is a kindergarten in there and suddenly it shows 
um, from that map layer, which is from a geospatial perspective is still a map layer. It now shows that here within the knowledge graph. Um, so there's 74 Git places. And it's also interesting, we had a couple of fire incidents there. Probably nothing uh, um, uh, serious, but at least uh, we can show that. So to show you that this is still a knowledge graph, I can actually go and, and explore this specific incident um, and say, okay, find me the, uh, the object. And you see this object number here again. And here we can see, oh, we have a child daycare facility. Um, and here you see the 74 kit places. And uh, we have a, um, oh, we don't have, well, that's interesting. There's no business attached to it. Um, well, we have a building part here as well. And we're browsing through the geospatial data as if it was a, a knowledge graph. So one of the things we did in this, um, in this part is um, looking at how can we build this bridge between the geospatial infrastructure and the knowledge graph? How can you go from geospatial representation of, of features on the map and actually quickly link into your, your knowledge graph. And that is something like I mentioned earlier uh, that I was on spatial data on the web working group. Um, if we go to the, to the map, go back to the map and zoom in again. Um, there it is. And now I need to quickly see, can you actually see my um, developer tools from the browser or not? Developer tools on the left hand side, OEG viewer? No, the uh, basically the, 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 the debugger for, for Firefox. No. You don't see that, right? Uh, no. right? I think you only share one window. And now? Yes. Yeah, okay. So what happens if I click uh, on the on the on the location, you see that it basically does a geospatial uh, geospatial request to the National Geo Register of the Netherlands. And this is the, so we're only showing the official data set provided by the Dutch government. And they have done something based on the, on the, on the recommendations we've written in the spatial data on the web working group. They've done something pretty interesting. We have a RDFC also um, reference in here. Which basically means if you want to see the geospatial or the, the linked data representation of this feature on this specific map, this is where you can get it. And um, for the fire graph, we basically say, oh, we, we get this data and we now pick up this URI and send this URI to our knowledge graph and basically ask the knowledge graph, what can you tell us about what's going on at this URI? And then it will answer that it knows two uh, specific uh, objects. So it says, oh, I, I have these two specific objects or just one specific object there. And if I copied that link and would go to the Explorer again, um, let me close that one. Nope, it's not capable of parsing. Uh, that's a demo effect here for you. Oh. There you go. So there you have the object again. So that is how we bridge this, gra this gap between um, sort of the spatial and the, um, the commercial and, and the um, semantic, semantic world. So one of the things we're literally currently working on is that uh, for a fire service and, and to, to make the most interesting bits and pieces out of these, um, um, the, the, this whole, um, how do you say that, uh, knowledge graph is if you would go to a, to a certain street and have a fire there, let me quickly, where is our demo street? Um, and you go to a specific apartment in any of these buildings, you'll notice that all these buildings have certain characteristics. So one of the things we're currently doing is ask the knowledge graph with the geospatial query, give me, uh, or, and, and we're using Stardock in the back end, give me uh, a, a machine learning model with a, a set of specific features to this building and find me um, 
the similarities to the other objects within, um, within this space. And the reason that we are interested in that is that if you look at where firefighters get into trouble is where they run into the unexpected, the unknowns, unknowns. So we are now doing experiments where can we pick any apartment in Amsterdam and see how much this is different from all the apartments surrounding it. Because if you have a street with 70 square meter apartments um, and then the fire department goes there, they're probably thinking that they will have a fire in just another 70 square meter apartments. But we have places where they have like two or 300 square meter apartments because they did all sorts of loft conversions. And those are the ones that are potentially get us in trouble. So we're using the geospatial mapping of, of find me all the relevant objects nearby, build a machine learning model, and then tell me how much of a difference there is from the current apartment where I go to the apartment that I'm actually having the incident in. Um, so that's, that, that is where we now do the combination between the geospatial part and the, um, the, uh, the, the, the semantic part. And we can use the knowledge graph because we can now say, I want to have multiple features from multiple data sets which are to be taken into account to build this, uh, this model. I think that's it. And I'm talking too long already, I guess. So um, yeah. Oh, very good.